What's up everyone? Today we're going to do an interesting problem where we are going to take a binary tree and we are going to print the tree out in order but not using recursion. And so this is actually a great example of something that you'll probably see a lot in interviews, which is a problem that you sort of know or a problem that maybe you've solved already before, but with some sort of twist. So like with this problem, you know, it would be pretty easy for us to do this recursively because it's basically the definition of depth first search. You just do depth first search and then you print out each node as you return back up, right? So it's not a very complicated thing to do if you're using recursion, but an interview may an interviewer may try and complicate things a little by throwing you a curveball like this, where now that we can't use recursion, we really have to think a lot more about this problem. And even though we know conceptually what's going on, we're going to have to dig in a little bit more. So let's go ahead and get started with this problem. First of all, we have an example which is fairly straightforward. We just have, you know, it's this is a binary search tree, so the when we print the results out in order, they should be basically in sorted order. Um, and so we, you know, get this output, nothing super exciting about that, but that's okay. Uh, and then we might want to go in to ask a few questions of our interviewer. So a couple questions that might be relevant here are the, is the tree balanced? I'm not sure if that's going to be necessary or not, but it may help us to think about maybe doing things in a certain way. And so in this case, we're not going to assume that the tree is balanced, so that's not really going to help us anyway, but it's worth asking. Another thing to just clarify is what are the, what is the type of the values in the node? So in the node. So in this case, obviously we can see that we're using integers and it doesn't really matter too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and use integers. And so now that we've sort of clarified the problem, let's dive into how we're actually going to solve this. So first what I would do when I think about this is I think about, you know, how do I already know how to solve this? Or alternatively, how could I do this in a brute force sort of way? So the first thing that I know is that I know how in this case I would do it if I were doing it recursively, right? So if I were doing it recursively, I would basically start at this node. So I would visit this node, then I'd come down here and then I'd come down here. So I'm going all the way left first. And I can adjust this a little bit. And then I'm going to, once I go left, I will come down and I will go to the one, I will print it out, I will back up to the three and print that out. And then I'll come down to the four. So then I'll go right. And let's imagine that there was another layer of our tree here just to make, just to help us clarify this a little better. And so this could be, you know, we're going to end up with duplicated values because I didn't actually leave enough space here. But this is, you know, we can assume that this is valid. It doesn't really matter too much. So once we come, we're going to come all the way down to the left. We're going to go back up. And then our recursive algorithm will have us go right once and then go left again. So we always go left first and then right afterwards. And we have a very easy way to deal with that because we are using our recursive stack. And so we're basically pushing stuff onto our recursive stack and then popping stuff off of our recursive stack. So what we see is basically that we, you know, go left and then anytime we go back up, we go up one to here, we print the three first, and then we go, so we basically go left, print everything that's down left, then we go up, print, and then we go down to the right and print potentially or we go down to the right first and then see if we can go left again so we go right and then left as far as we can go print print and then every time before we go right we print so we print when we're going left and then we print before we go right so what we can do here is we can actually treat this similarly and then of course this would continue down on this uh, right hand subtree as well so we would go right first so we visit this and then we're going to come left. So we went left, we print the six, we print the seven, and then we go right and print the eight and that's it. So we can think about this similarly to how we would think about it recursively because we have a data structure for this. We have a stack, right? And there's a reason why they call it a recursive stack in that it works exactly like a stack. So how can we codify what we're doing here into something that we could use as a iterative stack. 
And the answer is that we can easily define something that will just go left, right? It's easy for us to traverse down to the left. And as we traverse down, we can push elements onto the stack. And then when we get all the way to the bottom, when we've gone as far left as we can go, as we did here, we're gonna pop our element off the stack and print it. We're going to pop this element off the stack. And then we're going to, for each element, we can check if there's a right child or not. So since this has a right child, we're gonna pop this off the stack. And so basically what we have is we have a stack that's going to have the values five, uh, one, three, five. So we'll consider left is the front and right is the back of the stack. And then we're going to put, so we're gonna go five, three, one. We're pushing those onto the stack. Now we're gonna pop off one. One has no children, so we can't do anything now. So we pop off one. Then we're gonna pop up and print it. Then we're gonna pop off three and print it. But three has a child, right? Three has a right-hand child. So we'll push that onto the stack. And now we wanna go left again. So now we're at four and we're gonna go left and we go to three, this three here. So we put three on the stack. And then there's nowhere we can go, so we pop it off and print it. We pop the four off and print it. And then we see that there's a right child, so we put that four on, and then we put it on. We don't can't go anywhere, so we pop it and print it. And now we're back up to five. So we've just gone through this left subtree in order, right? Because we've every time we just go all as far as we can left. And then once we've gone all the way left, we go the minimal amount right that we can go and go all the way left again, right? So we're each step, we're trying to go as little bit right as we can, because that's going to obviously give us the, uh, that's going to go in order, right? Because we're never gonna go, we're never gonna miss anything. And so this continues, this algorithm continues with the five. So we pop the five, we print the five, which is right because we wanna print that before we print anything on this right subtree. We pop the five and we see that as a right child. So we push on the seven. Then seven, we have a left child, which is the six. So we push on the six. Six has no children. So we pop six and print it. Seven, we pop, we pop seven and print seven. We push on eight. And then eight has no children, so we pop it, we print it, and now our stack is empty, and so we know that we're done. So hopefully that all made sense. It's a pretty quick explanation, but especially if you understand the recursive way of solving it, it should make sense how we're basically doing the same thing, right? We're not actually changing anything significant in the way that we're doing it. We're just doing our stack explicitly as opposed to doing it through recursion. So let's go ahead and code this up. So we're going to need our node class. So we'll define our node. And this will just have a left child and a right child and a value. So left, node right, and this is going to be an integer value. And so now we'll define our iterative function. So we, I'm just gonna call this traverse. I'll do, uh, it's gonna be void because we're just going to print out everything. We're not actually gonna return anything. Although we could, if we wanted to instead, we could add all of these elements to a list, for example. So we'll say private static void, I'll call it traverse. And it's gonna take in a node and So first what we need to do, obviously, is we're going to initialize our stack. So I'll create a stack of nodes. I'll just call it S. And now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a separate method that is just going to take in the stack and a node. And then it's going to add all of the left the leftmost path. It's just going to iterate, it's going to find as many left children as it can and add all those to the stack. Because we're basically going to end up doing that again and again, right? Because if you think about how we were doing this, we have our, we're gonna start with five, we're gonna add the left path. Then we're gonna pop up one, we'll go right, and then add the left path. In this case, I got rid of it, but you know, we had this whatever here 
three, four. So we're going to go. We're going to go up one. We're going to go right. But then we're going to add the left path. And if there was more, we would continue all the way down. And then we go up. We go right. There's no children here, so we go all the way back up. And then we go right because we've already gone left, and then we add the entire left path, and then we go right again. So basically what I'm gonna do is just add a method that's going to start at a node, and as long as the node.left is not equal to null, it's going to continue adding those left nodes to the stack. And it's just gonna make it a little bit easier because we're gonna be calling this in multiple places. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement that. I'll create just a private method called add left to stack, it's going to take in a stack of nodes, and it's going to take in a node. And the idea is just going to be here that I'll say while n is not null, then we're going to push n onto the stack. So s dot push n, and then n equals n dot left. So you could do this slightly differently, but basically what I'm saying is that you know every time n is not null it's going to get pushed onto the stack. And so eventually n dot left is going to be equal to null. So that's going to make n null. And then we're going to break out of this. And I don't need to return anything because we're modifying the stack in place. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and call that in here. So the first thing that we're going to do to start our function off is we want to add that entire left path to basically populate the initial state of our stack and get the top of the stack to be the very first thing we want to print. So we can just do add left to stack, and we'll call it with stack and node n. And now we are going to just loop until our stack is empty. So we're going to want to continue until we've popped everything off because we're not going to print anything until we pop it. And so if as long as the stack has elements in it, we know that there are elements that still need to be printed out. And so we'll do while not s dot is empty and we will first pop the note so we're going to first pop the top of the stack then we're going to print the top of the stack and then we're going to see if that node has a right subtree and if it has a right subtree we're going to add the leftmost path of that subtree right so we're going to say node cur equals s dot pop and then just system.out.print uh, value, And then all we have to do is check the right. So if cur.right is not equal to null, then all we want to do is add cur.right and its entire left path to the tree. And so because of how we implemented add left to stack, it adds the existing node as well as all the children. So all we have to do here is just call add left to stack s and cur.right. And that's a, our entire code. So it's not very complicated. It's not that much more complicated than the recursive code. The recursive code is nice because it handles all of the stack and everything for you. So it's just a little bit simpler and certainly is probably a better way to solve this. But with this restriction, the code doesn't actually end up being that complicated. So, and this should actually be public because this is our method. So, and I guess, you know, node should probably be public too because you're going to have to pass in a node to run your traverse function. So let's go ahead and test this. We can just test it with our example here. So I'm going to bring this down here. And we will go ahead and create our stack. So I'll just say s equals this. And that's the only thing that we really need to keep track. I guess we can keep track of n as well. But it's not super important. So we'll say, so we'll start n equals 5, stack equals new stack. So we instantiate our stack. And then we say add to left, add left to stack s and n. So n is still equal to 5. And we pass this into here. So n is not null. And therefore, we push 5 onto our stack and then say, n equals n dot left, which is 3. So we push 3 onto our stack. 
and then n.left is 1, so we push 1 onto the stack. Now we come to our while loop. S is not empty, so cur is going to be equal to, let's see, cur is equal to s.pop, so cur is equal to 1. We print out 1, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to add the new lines here, but you can see what I'm trying to do. So we print out 1, and then we say if cur.write is not equal to null, then do this, but it is null, so we don't do anything. Now we pop the next item, which is the three, and we say we print the three, and then we say if cur.write is not null, and cur.write is not null, then add left to stack of cur.write. So we're gonna add left to stack of, we're gonna call this on s, and n in this case is going to be four. So four is not null, we push that onto the stack, and then n.left is null, so we're going to break out of that loop and come back to here. Now we're going to come to, we're going to say the stack is not empty. Uh, cur is going to be equal to 4, which we're going to pop off the stack. We print 4. And then we're going to say, does it have any right children? No, it doesn't. So we continue. We pop 5 off the stack. And our stack was not empty at the beginning of this loop. It is empty right at this moment, but we're going to add more stuff to it before we get to the end of the loop. So cur is going to be equal to 5. We print 5. And now 5 does have right children. So we're going to call add. So we're going to call add left to stack of stack and node 7, right? Because that's going to be the right child. And so we're going to add the left, we're going to add, we're going to push 7 onto the stack, and then we're going to push 6 onto the stack, and then we're going to get null. We pop 6, print it, and it has no children, so we continue. We pop 7, we print it, and then we notice that the 7 does have a child, so we add we do n is equal to 8. We come down here, we add n to our stack, which is 8, and then there is nothing else. So we finally loop back to here. Our stack is not empty. We pop 8. We print 8. 8 has no children. So we don't do anything, and then we come back to here, and our stack is empty. So we've printed out everything in order. So in terms of time complexity for this problem, we are going to have a time complexity of O of n because we are basically iterating through every element of our tree once. It's pretty much the same as if we were doing a depth first search. And it's also the same in terms of space complexity because we are, rather than having the recursive stack, we have an explicit stack, but it's still going to be an O of n space complexity because we could have to store for example, if our tree was all one single path, then we could have to store every node of the tree in our stack, which would take uh, which would take n space. And so that's all there is to this problem. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, or definitely head over to the blog and check that out because there's a lot of cool stuff there. And otherwise, I'll see you guys again soon.